Mrs. Bonneville. Where are we? Ciao, Bella. <laughs> just been for a nice walk this morning. We have, and, and it's our. Let's just sort these cushions out. Oh, we've just made a nice, what we call posh coffee, cafetiere. Nice. Cafetiere. And it's our monthly podcast. It's a bit late. It's a bit, everything's been a bit late since the start of the new year. Can I just apologise as well because I uh, I broke the Donny, the DJI little camera that we film on. It was Valentine's Day and we'd gone for a lovely walk and um, and it dropped out of my pocket on the only stone that was on the ground and smashed. So we might not have a blog next week but we'll catch up with him when we can. We will, we will. Right, so for those that are new around here, we do a monthly podcast where we answer your questions, which you very kindly send in to this email address, darrenevans05 at gmail.com. We edit where we feel appropriate in terms of some of the language. Uh, we don't duck any questions. We try to stay clear of uh, religion and politics for obvious reasons. Um, as I say, we do these once a month. So please, 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 we've got quite a, a backlog just before Christmas we hardly had any questions now we've got a backlog we try to do a dozen or so questions each podcast so please bear with us if your question's not on this one be assured it will come up soon so with that shall we start yes right so we have got and as I say Mrs B likes to not know what the questions are so <laughs> uh, right Ruth and Greg Cook from Chelmsford we absolutely love the channel and when Mr B goes off on one it's so bloody funny. This is a good question to start with isn't it Ruth and Greg? Well I can only imagine what the question is going to be now Mr Ranty. <laughs> you are such a straight talker Mr B. More of you please. Thank you very much. I know I'm not everyone's cup of tea. Um, I aim not to offend but as I say I don't duck anything and it is just my opinion and our opinion so you know it's like anything it's uh, we're, we're entitled to it. So we would like to ask and in brackets and of course watch Mr B go off on one. Oh. Um. <laughs> what is it exactly about Twitter and Instagram that sets you off Mr B? You can have your top three things that you don't like. Mrs B you can even think it out by having your top three of things you do like. <laughs> Mrs B can you go first? Mr B can go last so we can watch him have a rant and get all hot and bothered. Oh. Seriously though we do love the channel and we do look forward to these videos. Thanks, Ruth and Greg. <laughs> I, I love it. So, I, top three things you like about Twitter things. and Instagram. Uh, well, I, I suppose it's the different people that you meet on there. Um, yeah, okay. I'll have a piece of chocolate. And it's dog chocolate. It, he's having a rest, look. Oh, okay. He's resting his, his bed. So, you do meet some nice people. There's a dark side to the social media, but Mr. Beale rants about that. But I like all the different people <laughs> when you friend people and you, you see their lives and what they're doing. Um, I enjoy putting little clips on as well because it's a good memory for us to, to look back on in years to come. It is. Um, I think that's two things, isn't yeah, it? And the third Chocolate. thing, the third thing. It's dog uh, safe. If you want to, to waste a few hours of your day, just look at one thing on Instagram and go on what they call the reel and you'll be completely taken in for hours and then I say to Mr B, he'll be watching rugby or something. And I'll go, oh, look at this dog doing this, or oh, look at this cat doing this, and he rolls his eyes at me. So I suppose they're my three things. Let's Mr. Just, B, a short rant. <laughs> right, a short rant, okay. Um, as I say, it's just my opinion, so, you know, please don't be offended, because it is just my opinion. Um, Mrs. B knows I, I do not understand why folk take photographs of food. I, don't, I, don't, I really don't get that. Um, I don't like Mrs. Me's alluded to it. I don't like all, but not all. I don't like some of the hate stuff on there. It's just mm -hmm. silly. Um, and I don't like what it does to folk, if I'm honest with you. Go outside and live your life. Don't live it on the internet. Um, so that's not too ranty. No. It's, I could no. have got really ranty because, believe you me, I detest both those platforms and all forms of social media. And I'm usually like that. She's never off it. Um, but anyway. As I say, that, that's just my view. Um, stop taking photos of stuff. Go out and live your life. Get off social media. Go out and live your life. Yeah, stop being nasty on social media. Go out and live your life. But it's nice that we've got our Twitter page and Instagram, isn't it? It is. It's very nice because and we are you going do out it. and doing stuff. Absolutely. And we do, as I say, it, there are nice sides to it, but there's the other side to it. 
I don't think that was too bad. As a little mini rant as our first question. Ruth and Greg, you're barred from the channel. No more <laughs> questions from you. No, thank you. Right, moving on. Ian and Amanda Ainsworth from Bolton in Lancashire. Mm. Uh, we absolutely love watching you two pair of nutcases thank you each sunday um you freshen up our lives and you freshen up our weeks and <laughs> um, you really are such a lovely couple and again mr bonneville you say it as you see it and that is a rare quality these days <laughs> oh god uh ian and amanda thank you thank you um ian and amanda's question is very short and um sweet what do we think um about all the public sector worker strikes at the moment oh I was to say, we try not to do politics, and it's not a political question, but Mrs well, B. Well, my opinion, and I know Mr B will probably have a different opinion, because we don't always agree on everything. No, we, we agree don't. on probably 50% of things. I think that if you're given a 5% pay increase and inflation is 10%, then if you do the sums, you're getting a 5% decrease in your salary. So... I, I don't blame them. I don't blame them. Uh, a, a, an increase in your salary should be an increase in your salary, not a decrease. So um, I don't. I, I hate to see the NHS striking, and I'm sure they hate to do it as well because it, it's falling on its knees anyway. But 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 what else can people do? So so I agree. If you're going to have a pay increase, make it a pay increase, not a decrease. That's right. Me. My my view. <laughs> God. Um, I don't believe, I'm not going to name which sectors or which workers within the public sector, um, but I do believe a lot of them don't know what a day's work is. There you go, I've said it. Uh, that's not because I'm private sector, um, but let me just balance some stuff out here. There are, I believe, a lot of folk who have this overwhelming sense of entitlement, um, but don't want to get up at the crack of dawn and do 12, 14 hours at the office and then drive home. Um, they think that just should arrive at the footstep um, without doing anything for it. So that's just my view. I do think there's a small portion of public sector job families that do deserve a pay rise. Um, but generally speaking, and I agree with Mrs um, Bonneville, I think the National Health do an amazing job. So you probably can guess what sector or what job families I do believe deserve a pay rise. The rest of them, I think you're absolute oxygen thieves. Moving on, <gasps> Christiana Powell from Ipswich. Apologies for Kenneth oh, yeah. cleaning yeah. himself. Luckily <laughs> he's facing us and not facing you because it's not pretty <laughs> at all. It'll get worse. Uh, Christiana Powell from, from Ipswich. <clears throat> Excuse me, been watching you two from the beginning. Keep up the great work, really do love the videos particularly the monthly podcast oh, thank you and christiana um has put do we think mercy marina is the best marina and um, we recently visit visited and we personally don't think it's all that it was nice but not as nice as we thought it was going to be and all the marketing collateral mrs bonneville what do you think mr b i'm sure you'll give us your opinion exclamation mark it will it's been gonna <laughs> these questions are making you have a little rant God, they are. um i suppose to us it's home yeah. And, um, you know, we, we'll be walking around with Kenneth later on. We've had a lovely walk this morning out in Derbyshire and we'll yep. have a nice walk around the marina this afternoon. And we'll chat to people and we'll say hello and somebody might say, oh, do you fancy this? Or, do you... And that to us, or that to me, makes this my home and makes this a lovely community that I live on. I know it's got a few um, rough edges, but, uh, but, but on, you know, I suppose if you see it through... Through, through different pair of eyes if you come in as a visitor um i don't know i don't i don't really know because well what, what, what? yeah l let me add to that do i sorry do i think it's the best marina no not not at all and i, and I actually don't agree with you christina i don't think it's marketed as the best marina it doesn't say it's the best marina uh, that's some claim isn't it to be the best that whatever um I don't think it's the best. I think it's the best for us in the area in which we had to look. We were lucky in that Mercy Marina kind of is in the catchment area. We we said 50 miles maximum and we're at that maximum mm -hmm. limit for Mrs B to be able to get back each Thursday to see a family. If that wasn't at play, um, I think you know, if you've watched us from the beginning, there's no way um, I'd want to be at Mercia. I'd be wanting to be down at Stratford-on-Avon Marina because we love the Cotswolds. So I think in the area in which it is located, 
I think it suits us really well. And it's and it's lovely. I mean, we did when we first came here. When we first decided we're going to buy a boat, we came, we looked at quite a few marinas. We did. And it was yeah. this one that we looked at. Oh, and went, without, Do you know yeah. what? This is this, this is, is the one. This is lovely. This is this is just right for us. Yeah. This is what we want. Absolutely. Um, so, yeah, as I say, I'm sorry to pick you up on, but I, I really don't agree. I don't think it markets itself as being the best marina. It's the largest inland marine. I still think it's the largest in Europe. Mm. I'm up for correction on that. Um, but I don't think it ever marketed itself as the best marina. Um, it suits us. Yeah, um, I love it. I yeah. really love and it. It's, it's a nice place to live. Yeah. Um, I'd recommend it to anyone. Um, so I'm not, so I'm not knocking it. For us, it's like going back to the 50s. I mean, yeah. not that we lived in the 50s because we're not that old, but uh, or just not that old, not quite that old. No, I'm not, I'm not. Um, but yeah, it's like it's that lovely like community feel and stuff, and yeah. you know you don't have to lock your door when you just nip to the shops or something like that. It's it's just lovely. Yeah, it's just nice. But anyway, thank you for that question. Yes, thank you, thank you very much. For Joseph that. Carroll from Coventry, um, love love sorry love the stuff, love the vids, miss the motorbikes! Exclamation <laughs> mark. <laughs> um, Joseph put keeping up with the Joneses. One, two, three, four, five, six exclamation marks. Do you care about the age of your boat and would you buy a used pre-owned boat again? We're asking because we are considering buying a boat and don't know whether to go new or pre-owned, pre-used. Let me ask oh, that first. Yeah, um, first. Let me have a go first instead of you all the time. Um, yeah, I, in a heartbeat. Can, um, can we, we stumbled on this boat. It's got the layout, as you know, if you've watched us, it's got the layout we wanted. And again, it's just our opinion. We were interested in the second bedroom. Um, we wanted the space. So it's got the layout. Um, so it didn't really bother us if it was new or used, if I'm honest with you. Um, financially, we saved a bucket load of money um, buying used. This um, was bought for nearly 200 fifty thousand pound four years ago we've got the sales invoices in the drawer um so we've bought an absolute cinch of a of a boat in terms of the financials um so yeah i'd, I'd go buy again yeah um, all new boats everything new becomes second hand very quickly um once the shiny stuff's where you know wore off so yeah in a heartbeat i'd certainly would mrs b yeah yeah yeah, it wouldn't bother me in the slightest. Because no. when you think about it, when you buy a house, unless you have one built, your house is second hand, isn't it? Or third hand or fourth hand or whatever. Uh, yeah. But yeah, it wouldn't bother me. If you fall in love with a house or a boat or whatever, it's irrelevant of, of yeah. how many people have And it. also, just to give a slightly different perspective, um, Joseph, we are currently, or I'm currently looking at um, changing our vehicle. And I'm currently looking at five, ten year old cars doesn't bother me as long as it's been well maintained it really doesn't bother me so um keeping up with the joneses with registration plates and no. new boats no no, no. um n not not us not interested so hope that uh, answers your question and let us know if you do get a boat i'd love to know yes. what, we, what you've bought what you've got right paul walker sorry paul and pam walker from northampton haven't put anything about whether you like the videos <laughs> um, haven't put anything about you know us. I'm joking. Um, Paul and Pam have just put what car are you getting, and why is the duster going? Um, can I answer that? Yeah. The duster is going because I've done a little bit of a deal at work. Um, this is going to sound as though I'm flexing. I'm not. Um, I've been offered some long-term executive incentives at work, LTIs, um, which has allowed me if I surrender my kind of monthly car allowance, which is what I'm using um, to pay for the duster, um, I'm gonna put that into my pension and work are also gonna put three times that amount as well um, to top my pension up. Now I already have a company pension and it's a rather nice company pension. So I'm 55, got another five, 10 years of work left. So it was a no-brainer wasn't it mm. it was an absolute no-brainer so that's the only reason that duster's going um love the car um, i know it's not everyone's cup of tea not bothered per the question before joseph in terms of you know new or used don't really care what folk think about what car i drive um the duster's a lovely car it's mm. it's practical it's utilitarian it's got a great little engine on it right um, comfy. it's very comfortable yeah. we've just done devon and back um it, it's a lovely car but that's the reason it's going. Um, we are looking at, 
in no particular order. <laughs> we're looking at Range Rover Evokes. We're looking at um, Freelander 2s. So that's my point. Freelander 2s are... I don't think they've made them for about five or ten years. My brother's got one and it's lovely. Isn't yeah, it? yeah. Wendy's brother's got one. It's really nice. He's, he's landed on an absolute stonking vehicle. Um, and if it is one of those, the reason we're going to go that way is we'd actually, for once, actually like a proper... 4x4. Four four. I'm not saying the duster isn't, but a proper 4x4. Four four. So we're looking at Freelanders, we're looking at Evokes, um, we've looked at Mercedes, still kind of on the hit list, um, and we're looking at Discoveries as well. And that's about it, I think. Isn't yeah, it? I, I'm very more for the uh, SUV type. I like to be yeah, yeah, quite and high me, up and in, me. in the car. It's uh, yeah. It's a nice way to drive into it rather than your Mercedes. Yeah, definitely. Um, so yeah, watch your space. Um, I've committed work-wise to getting something sorted out in the next month or two. Um, mm. So I will. Uh, we will get something. So yeah, watch your space. We might end up with a mini. <laughs> you, never know, Mr. Mr. you never know, Mr. B. You never know, Mr. B. He'll come home with something. Thank you, Paul and Pam. Thank you. Um, Sarah Lomas from Southern Spain. Oh. oh my God, you guys are the best thing on YouTube. Oh. Absolutely love watching you. Thank you. Um, right, Sarah's put, love your views on working and not retiring. What does Wendy really think about your views on this, Darren? I'm glad he's carrying on working. Um, <laughs> you live with him. <laughs> I'm joking. Well, a, a little bit of him is joking and a little bit of him is not. Um, no, it'd be a nightmare. It'd be an absolute nightmare if you retired now. Oh dear. See, my days are full. I've, I have lots of full days by doing th the different things that I do, but it wouldn't satisfy Darren to do these things. Not here. Um, Not here. The walking and stuff, it, it'd be okay. But the everyday things, he'd just get so bored with that. Um, and then he'd just get under my feet. So, um, so working like he does, and he enjoys it. Uh, it's a bit of a ball ache. You've got to drive rush hour and everything else like a lot of people do. But you manage to get a few days on the boat working as well, don't you? We've got that nice. Area. I suppose that's the good thing about being the boss. Um, yeah, he can he can work from home, and yeah. I can, he can keep out of my way by going to that end of the boat. <laughs> but no, it, it wouldn't do him any good to retire right now. No, I did it once, and again, I'm not. I hate the phrase flexing. When I met Mrs. B, I was retired. I retired at uh, 44, um, so that's 11 years ago. Um, and I don't think it was until I met Mrs B that I realised that maybe it wasn't the wrong decision but I needed something to do um, so retiring at the moment for me no um, retiring here forget it not not no um, this this would be this would be hell on earth for Mrs Mrs B um, it really would that's not me saying I don't love the boat um, it's just not the right place for me to retire so um, thank you for your honest views <laughs> <laughs> Moving on. Thanks. We for... never shirk questions here. No, we, we don't. We don't. Well, thank here. you for that, Sarah. Yes, thank you. Um, Chris. You have him 24 7. <laughs> Chris Stock from Oakhampton. Um, again, Chris hasn't put anything about why he liked the channel. I'm not, you know. Chris has gone straight in. Why has France been put on the back burner? Is it because of Brexit? Uh, no, no, no. Oh, what France has in going on holiday? Living there, living there. Oh, living there. Um, no, I, I say this perhaps every other uh, podcast. When Mr. B says he's thinking about something, it usually means he's done it and it's done and dusted. Um, one of the things that we have been talking about is France is on the back burner because we, he's not going to retire for about another 10 years, so we're not even going to look till, till he's retired. Um, so France is still there. But we've all also been thinking, since we've got a dog, you know, how nice it would be to have a have a garden. And, you know, in another year's time, we might get a little brother for, for Kenneth, you know, um, and, and how much nice that would be to have a garden. So then the other night, I think you were, you were actually laid on here, we were watching something, and he sat there with his laptop looking at bungalows in the UK. Uh, and he's saying to me, look at this bungalow. And I'm saying, what are you looking at bungalows for? And he said, well, for our retirement. So, so you know, we've been looking at a few things, but it's, uh, for as, as far as we're concerned, it's, it's, not, it's not out of the question, but we're just looking at other avenues now, aren't we? Yeah. As uh, well. Absolutely, Chris. It's a, it's a good question. Very good um, question. Just to confirm, it's got nothing to do with Brexit, and I don't want to get political. 
were quite, I was going to say fortunate. No, it's not about being fortunate. Wendy's worked hard all her life and I'm continuing to work hard. Um, Brexit has no consequence on us being able to move to France. Kenneth? Well, you're talking no, about just getting... No to... consequence at all. Financially, it doesn't, doesn't have a consequence. We've looked at, we've sat with lawyers and had that conversation. Our finances and pensions are in the right place. So Brexit doesn't really uh, come into it for us. Now, some folk listening to this could go, oh, yeah, that's all right for you. Well, yeah, I'll sleep really well because, as I say, I work really hard. Um, Mrs B's earlier point. So we've just literally come back from a week down, well, five days down in Devon. <gasps> um, and Mrs B's right. When I say I'm thinking about something, um, she's right. And I am thinking about something. The minute something comes across our path, property wise oh. that would allow us to get into that property have a garden for kenneth mrs b's right we'd love another little uh, dog maybe in 12 months a little brother sister for kenneth that's that's definitely top of my mind at the moment so the plan is starting to firm itself up so forget france for a minute because that's 10 years away if we go there so the plan at the moment is if a property comes up in a vicinity that still matches the criteria of Mrs. B able to go and see her parents once a week, we'll do it um, mm. because we'd like a garden. Now that's got nothing to do with Mercy Marina or nothing to do with not wanting to live on a boat or not liking a boat. It's got everything to do with needing, well not needing, we'd like a garden for Kenneth. Mm. So that's the plan. Then permitting we stay in that property and then when I do retire, we either move to France or move down to Devon because I've thoroughly enjoyed being down in Devon. We, thoroughly yeah, enjoyed yeah, it. Yeah, we love it. We've had several trips down yeah. to Devon and, you know, you've got the weather down there. And yeah. The only thing that, that, that I would have to get my head around, if anybody's been to Devon... Oh roads. God, the roads. Oh, my <laughs> goodness. Not all of them. Oh. Some of the roads that take you down to the beaches are very um they're yeah. they're, they're <coughs> single Kenneth. track roads come here but two-way with, with come passing here. points come oh on oh my goodness stop you, being a prima donna you take your life in your hands you going do. down don't you yeah so just to confirm nothing to do with brexit but if we do find something in the vicinity i'd like a little bungalow um or even a nice little terrace cottage as long as it's got a garden um preferably with bungalow for kenneth we're out of here if not we stay here, but longer term, as I say, it'll either be Devon or France or somewhere like that. <gasps> Hope that makes sense. Moving Ooh. on. It's exciting, isn't it? But you can see France from Devon. Can you on see a, France from Devon? I'm not sure, on a clear day maybe. But, you can, but you're, in, you're looking in the right direction when you're looking at the sea, aren't you? <laughs> you are. Um, Olivia Burnside from County Antrim has put, again, don't nothing about our channel nothing about watching us and enjoying it <laughs> olivia's gone straight got some people harsh aren't they <laughs> olivia's gone straight in um doesn't it piss you off having to pay so much tax on your salary sorry if that's too personal um no it doesn't i can answer that straight away olivia it doesn't piss me off at all um as i say i earn a nice salary um i don't mind paying me tax um i have enough left over to live i have enough left over to put into a pension pot um we're okay aren't we yeah so yeah. it doesn't piss me off to be honest with you i think it's one of the things that comes with climbing the corporate ladder sorry that's, that answers. A, that's an unusual question it's a very it? unusual question yeah, i'm not sure why that. olivia's asked it yeah thank you um, does it piss you off olivia <laughs> yeah if you've gone into that high tax brand let me know <laughs> this is a lot of tax that yeah it is it, but it is but hey end of the day you can't fight gravity, as my mother used to say. Um, Edward and Louise Butler um, from South Wales. Oh, nice. You two are the absolute nuts. Why have you not come down to the Gower yet? We love watching you. <gasps> Trust me, I've said it many times. If you've not been to the Gower and experienced the Gower's beaches, they are the best beaches I on the yet. planet. I haven't We'll have to go there this summer, won't yeah. we? No grey area there. Take I don't care. Of... If I get any hate mail, the Gower beaches are the best beaches on so the planet. So we said that, yeah. On the planet. And believe you me, I've seen most of the planet. They really are. But we will come down, Edwin and Louise, I promise. Um, I love how you don't appear to care about... <laughs> to care about. This is a bit similar to Joseph's earlier. Sorry, I'll start again. I love <laughs> how you don't appear to care about keeping up with others. Mrs B, is he really like that? 
i.e. he really is his own man and doesn't want to keep up with others or mind too much about others opinions <laughs> we'd dearly love to know mrs b over to you yeah he's abs <laughs> honestly you know when you know people go you, we're just the same on screen as we are in real life it really is like that it really doesn't give a um a, a damn basically um it would hate to upset you yeah, I'm, ta I'm talking about you, you like you're not even here but it would hate to upset you and it'd, 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 it'd upset him if he thought it'd upset you but if you ask him a question don't ask the question if you don't want to know the answer that's the best thing to say about Darren um, if you want to an answer his personal honest answer then ask him the question otherwise don't because <laughs> if you're looking for something else then you're not going to get it so yeah he's exactly like that that's it and, and, the, and the Yorkshire in me likes that we, we like either black or white where there's no gray areas it's either yes or no and and that's it so so i think that's why we muddle along quite well together because i'm i like that i like a straight talking person and he is thank you and the only you know the most important things in my life you're looking at that's it U upset my wife you're done upset my dog trust me oh dear you're done and you know the family you know if anybody upset the family um believe you me you're done um other than that yeah thank you <laughs> I, but seriously i would i would hate it if i upset or offended anyone yeah. i know sometimes my views aren't everyone's views that's fine but yeah. that's the way of the world isn't it but yeah, yeah thank you for that question right um peter and pam burns from glasgow Sunday nights are absolutely the business. Thank you ever so much for making our lives so cheerful and uplifting. <laughs> although although Mr. Ranty has been all ranty on this one, this podcast. It's your questions. Yeah, Mr. Um, Ranter. <laughs> Peter and Pam have put, so we would really dearly love to know, are there any regrets about getting Kenneth whilst living on a boat? <gasps> no. No. Not one. Not a one. No. Oh, absolutely. No. We should have done... Well... When we were on land, we talked about getting a dog. For whatever reason, we didn't get a dog. When we got on narrow boat, we thought about getting a dog. For whatever reason, we didn't get a dog. And now we've got Kenneth. Oh, it's the best thing we've done. Oh, it's just it just you know, like we just said, we just spent Look a week him. down in Devon on the beaches and stuff. And oh, everything we do, we just like. Oh, I can't wait to see his face when he sees this. I can't wait to see this. I can't wait to see him doing that. Oh, we just love him. It just makes everything we do just, just yeah. lovely. The, and, and please, again, don't take... You've just heard a couple of questions, um, you know, what the plan is in terms of property. Um, don't get me wrong, if we end up staying on this boat for another five years, it wouldn't bother me. No. Um, it re truly wouldn't. But as I say, not for retirement. Um, but we would like um, to get a garden for, for Kenneth because we would like to get Kenneth a little brother or a little sister next year. So that would be my only regret. Um, oh yeah, doesn't stop you having yeah. a dog, and it look we've got a lovely big boat. I, because I'm 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 retired, so Mr. B sometimes he's he's out of the boat when he's working twelve thirteen hours, and my day is all around Kenneth. So he usually has a, about two or three hours sleep, and when he's not asleep, we're out. So so we'll have a nice walk in the morning. We'll go out for about an hour and a half, two hours, me and Kenneth, and then he'll come back and he'll sleep for two or three hours. And then I'm ready then after that two or three hours, where where am I going to take him next? And my friends will come with me and we might go down to the lake or something. But it all is geared around his walks. So I will walk him at about every three hours. Um, and, and it works lovely, but it's all geared around him. But what would be nice is when he's having his sleep time, is if we had got a little garden and he was sleeping out in the garden. Yeah. That would be nice. It'd be nice for him to fetch a stick home and be able to, to, to sit on the garden and chew his sticks and things. Um, he's not on the boat. He's probably off the boat more than he's on the boat. Yeah, but it would is. be nice just just yeah. to have a, just an a little garden. Yeah, when we go to my sister's on on a Thursday, and, and he goes up, and all his his little furry cousins are there. My sister's got a huge garden, and and in summer they're all just pile out the kids, the dogs, and everything pile out in the garden. And it's nice to be able to sit out like that. So yeah. So so if we could have a garden, that'd be that'd be nice. Just a little, even just a little. But generally fun. speaking, no regrets. None. Of living not on the boat a one. With no. A dog. Oh, go get, no. Just go do it. Oh yeah, it's the best thing that's ever ever happened to us. Right, um, Andrea. Should have put. I've got new reading glasses. I won't. Put, oh, I, won't I won't put them on oh, today. Andreas Swithermore from Lyme Regis. 
Um, Andrew again has gone straight in, not with you know any nice introductions, love Sunday night at seven o'clock, all that stuff. No, Andrew's gone straight in with in bold, please sell your boat to me. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, have you got a have nice to... little cottage with a garden? Yeah, if you've got exchange. a nice little cottage with a garden <laughs> somewhere in a 50 mile vicinity. Um, no, so please sell me your boat. We have been looking for ages and simply can't find a 70 foot one. Uh, sorry, 70 foot one bedroom aquiline. Uh, think we've asked, sorry, think you've asked, answered this question before. We would like to ask again, what would you have done if you hadn't got the boat you're on now? We'd have waited. Mm. It's as simple as that. Yeah. The dilemma I think we'd have been facing or would have faced is, um, and again, if you've not seen that podcast, it's a good few ago where we talk about new boats versus mm. pre owned. The dilemma for us would have been, um, would we have had to have gone and pre-ordered a new boat, a new build like this, mm. and then possibly had to wait 18 months, 24 yeah. months. Yeah, because it takes a long um, time, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. So we were really lucky landing on this boat. Mm. Um, what we wouldn't have done, um, because we're not... <laughs> Someone once said to me many, many moons ago, you know, what's your plan B? I don't have a plan B. I've never had a plan B. It doesn't. The minute you have plan B, is the moment you're expecting plan A to not work out. Again, I've got no issue with folk wanting a plan B, C or D, but I don't work like that. I'm all in or I'm not. Um, so if we couldn't have got this boat, we'd have hunkered back down on our narrow boat and had to have decided. Mm. My view is, if we couldn't have found a big open plan, one bedroomed, and it had to have been a 70 foot for us, I think we'd have probably gone back on land I think. Don't know. Who knows? But yeah, we well, wouldn't have panicked and bought something we didn't know. No, no. But but uh, I think now that we've we've been into boat it's been into boating. <laughs> floaters. Is, yeah, floaters. <laughs> um we see the boats that come and go here at Mercia and the the some of the array of different types of boats that that are here for sale sometimes, aren't there? Yeah. So I'm sure I don't think we would have had to wait too long. Good point. Because because there's so many different types. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, there's there's one at the moment. It's a narrow boat, but it looks like a working boat, doesn't it? Yeah. It's got that big long flat boat. bit and stuff. So you know, and that's up for sale. So so there there would have been something that came up that that suited us. That's a fair point. And you know, we may have had to have gone and looked a little bit further afield. Mm. Um, but who knows? But one thing we wouldn't have done is just panic we just because our narrow boat was lovely yeah there was nothing wrong with love life she was trying. Lovely. we yeah. just made the decision we wanted a little bit more well a lot more space um but i do know what you mean um in terms of you're looking for ages to find yeah let's put it this way since we've been on this boat which is well over a year now i've not seen another 70 foot aquiline one bedroom come up for sale anywhere no so i do hear you mm. so there is that challenge but we wouldn't have bought something for the sake no, of it no no and we, we're so pleased about this yeah. room aren't we the yeah room we've got. um and seriously like all others if you've bought yourself something drop us a little email yeah. or the picture we'd love to see it yes definitely uh brian and sue miller from stoke-on-trent not Ooh, a million miles away from far us away, no. um absolutely love you pair <coughs> excuse me really down to earth really refreshing watch um thank, thank you. you keep up the great work brian and sue thank you thank you very much and they put a touch <laughs> This is a recurring question. So, come on, does your stove really keep the boat warm? Question mark. <laughs> come on now, does it really keep it warm? <clears throat> we have a 68 foot wide beam and it's bloody freezing cold constantly. <laughs> However, we do have a diesel stove though. Perhaps we should convert the stove like you did. Cheeky question, how much, how long did it take? I don't know if you can see it on camera, but there's probably a nice little glow in that fire. Um, look, does it keep the boat warm? Yes. <laughs> We've had the Webasto on twice this winter, and that's because I've put it on just to run it through its cycle mm -hmm. and make sure it's working. Um, I put it on recently when we'd had a real um, heavy frost, just to make sure, obviously, the pipes and all that stuff. Um, and that's it. This stove has kept this boat, so this huge open span of yeah. boat, and I mean, and we say it a lot, don't we? We should maybe video one night, but Mrs. B sits over there in a chair. We pull it closer to the stove. I'm usually sprawled out on the sofa. We've definitely never got any socks on. Oh, never Last got any night, socks. Mrs. B had a t-shirt on. I've yeah. always 
got we're a just, t-shirt on We're just coming night. from walking, that's why I've still yeah. got my sweatshirt on. Um, honestly, I cannot, I cannot stress this enough. That stove is amazing. Um, what we do do um, in the bedroom is, if it's yeah. really, really cold, we've got the Dyson fan in there. So probably about yeah. 20 minutes before we go to bed, we'll put the Dyson fan in there. Good show. Because it doesn't hit. We can have the door open. But, but we tend to close the bedroom door and then it just keeps all this area nice and warm. So in the bedroom, we've got the Dyson fan for about 20 minutes and that just warms it up. Yeah. Um, but other than Absolutely. that, yeah, we wander around in just just, yeah. just hardly anything. I know exactly what you mean by the, again, I don't want to hate, it's just personal opinion, but I do know what you mean about the diesel. We've got another chap um, who's on a an Aqualine boat further down the pontoon who, um, who spoke to both of us in, individually and said he's freezing cold with his diesel stove. Um, ours was diesel before yeah. um, we converted it back to the multi-fuel, the Squirrel, more so Squirrel, uh, and we tried it, and it's just our opinion, it did nothing. It mm. didn't heat this boat at all. So it's the best thing we did. In terms of price, it was about 1,200 quid. Um, we were lucky because obviously we got the more so Squirrel stove yeah. already in there, so all they really did was take the innards out and cap off um, the diesel. Because um, we, then... we thought, didn't we, when we first came onto Chow Bella, we both went, oh, it's got a morsel squirrel multi-fuel, yay! And it's a morsel squirrel, but it was diesel. diesel. Um, and what is really funny is that the guys that work on Street A, which is it's the engineering side of things that, that come and fix your boats and stuff, um, they came and changed our morsel squirrel from a diesel to a multi-fuel. And then we've got a friend that's on the marina and she suffers with with asthma and things so she's got to be really careful with the dust and everything and uh they're having their morsel squirrel changed to a diesel so so one you know we were changing it from one to the other but it took him a few days didn't it to do yeah it took two days, two and days. just on that point and again if you've got asthma a different conversation but you know when people say oh they're a bit dusty get a grip just get a dustpan and brush out um honestly that if, if you are worried about things like that don't and just get the hoover out um but yeah good shout mrs b took a couple of days didn't it yeah just a couple of days because we got the shell yeah. we got the morsel school stove already best thing we've ever done yeah, in this it was, boat. yeah. it's been lovely without warm. doubt yeah brilliant gorgeous isn't it yeah two one question to go um sam and paul timmins from port from port talbot um again no we love your channel no, we think you're the best thing on the internet. We're just going to assume you do, and we're going to assume you love us. I'm only joking, Sam. Um, so Sam and Paul have put, or have asked, are you bored of living on a boat um, and or mercy of Mr B? Um, <laughs> God, this doesn't go away. Maybe I should, no. Um, Mr B, you don't seem that excited about life at mercy, <laughs> life at mercy if you're retired. No, it no, wouldn't. It wouldn't. It wouldn't yeah. at all. No. Do you know what I'm going to do? This Sam and Paul, you're the last couple that I will um, speak to about this subject. So if <laughs> anyone else writes in, drops an email with a question about me retirement, me, I'm not going to answer it. So this is the last time I will go on about this. Um, it's got <laughs> Mercy Marina is a nice place to live. Mm, it's lovely. It is. It's okay? lovely. But if I was retired right now. And the one thing I cannot, I know everyone's got a budget. We'll have a budget when we retire. Everyone has a budget. Um, but the thought of me just sitting on this boat doing nothing for day in, day out would drive me. No, I would have to keep working because there's not enough in this place to keep me active. I will need to be down by the sea, the coast, in a village, uh, the Cotswolds. I'm not knocking Derbyshire, I'm not knocking Mercia, but there's not enough going on here for me. It is mind-blowingly numb if I was retired here. So it's got nothing to do with the boat, it's got nothing to do with the marina, um, it's got everything to do with the location in which I would be waking up every day. And trust me, as we've said a few questions ago, I would be Mrs B's worst nightmare. And also, um, I'm going to answer this just for one more time. Um, I've got no issue with folk being retired. Trust me, I haven't. Um, I don't want to retire. Um, I really, at the moment, don't want to retire. I'm only 55. Um, I, I just, the thought of it, having done it once, no. Um, I like my, well, I love my job, 
I love getting up to work. I've got a strong work ethic. Um, and why would I want to stop doing that? Um, as I say, we're, we're doing all right. Um, and I like my life and I know Mrs. B likes her life. Where I think we have got a challenge is when I do finally come home one day and say to, <laughs> and say to Mrs. B, right, I'm retired. I think the stepping stone into it will be actually getting off this boat um, and buying our little place in Derbyshire, Yorkshire, somewhere close enough for Mrs B to go and see her family each week. I think that'll be a, a, a stepping stone into it. But that, I think, is our only challenge. When I finally come home one night and say, that's it. And then I, uh, I pick myself up off the floor. <laughs> she emigrates. Get the Valium. <laughs> <laughs> Well, hold on a bit. So, Mrs. B's sister, Julie. Oh, by the way, Julie, Doctor Doolittle with dogs, and her lovely husband, Dave, my brother-in-law, sister and bro sister-in-law, brother-in-law. Dave's just retired. Yes, and he. What was Julie's first reaction? Because <gasps> <laughs> Dave has a very corporate role, very senior role, um, travel the world with his job, and has suddenly stopped working. So it's a massive, massive it's step. A bit, yeah, it is a big step, yeah. And yeah. They've, they've, they've found their feet now. Of course they, they have. Yeah. And we will. D but... Dave's out of the house a lot. <laughs> and uh... That's my point. So I couldn't get... What, what am I going to do here? No, there's not enough to get me off the boat. So anyway, we've got that to think about. But <laughs> I do think, final point, I do think that transitional piece might be us getting our little bungalow or whatever it may be until we finally move either down to Devon or over to France or wherever. But that's the final time I'm gonna talk about life at Mercia. <laughs> I genuinely do love living here. What did I say to you just this morning? It wouldn't bother me if we were here for another five, 10 years. If that's how it turns out, well, that's how it turns out. It is lovely. Cause you know, when we come back from, when we come back from holiday, wherever we go on holiday, um, you're coming back and you're almost coming back and it, it still to a feels, holiday. It still feels like holiday. So yeah. you're coming back off your holiday to like a holiday place. Absolutely. And it's lovely, isn't it? it and is. that is nice. It, it is. is. It, it is, is really nice. So that's it. If you've got to this point of the podcast, <laughs> that's well my final well time done, I will talk about life at Mercy <laughs> and retirement. <laughs> right. We're going to say goodbye. Um, as I say, keep the questions coming. Yeah. Um, don't worry if you've not, as, as we've said, if you've not heard yours yet. It will be there at some point. I don't delete them. I don't delete them. So it will be on the list. And we will see you hopefully next week. If not, bear with us, as I say, at the moment, other than phones. Um, we've, we're a bit challenged in terms of what we're actually going to film on because I Mrs filmed Bonneville some, broke I, the DJI. I filmed some really good stuff for the Cotswolds on the, on the DJI when it dropped and anyway, smashed. I was mortified. I'm going to get up. Oh. Can I say goodbye? <laughs> goodbye, <laughs> say everybody. Goodbye. <laughs> Goodbye, That's everyone. how he talks like that. <laughs>